What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Idaho Rifleman. Today we're going to be reviewing a newer firearm to the market. This is the Stevens 334. It is a Turkish made firearm. ATA Turkey makes this. Stevens has imported it and marketed it as the Stevens 334. It's a 308 Winchester bolt action hunting rifle. A very, very beautiful gun. This is actually wood stocked, Turkish walnut. Um, overall, it's a very beautiful firearm. So we're gonna talk about this today and I will give you kind of a breakdown over it and of course we'll shoot it too. Let's go ahead and take a look at the trigger pull on this. We are clear, we are safe. There has not been any ammunition in this. Box magazine is detached and we can see very plainly that this rifle is cleared. Now, this is an adjustable trigger. There is a set screw up inside the trigger guard to adjust this, but right out of the box, there's a little bit of play in that. Not, it's not egregious, but it is there. But you take up that play, you're right up against the wall instantly, and there is no, other than that initial take up, once you hit that wall, there is nothing. It's just a clean three pounds, three, maybe four pounds tops on this. Go through that again. Yeah, very clean break on that. Very nice trigger for a fairly economy rifle right out of the box. Let me go ahead and show you guys some of the detailing on this rifle. This is a Turkish walnut. It is actual wood, not synthetic, made to look like wood. Very beautiful, amazing pattern in this wood. This rifle itself is actually very lightweight for being a wood stocked rifle. Coming in at 7.4 pounds with the optic on it, you're probably looking around eight pounds, a little over. But for reference, the 1911 itself actually weighs about seven pounds and change. So very comparable to actually carrying a 1911 if you can believe that has a 20 inch barrel on it at time of recording this rifle is available in three different calibers either 243 winchester 308 winchester or 6.5 creedmoor um, i'm sure there will be more calibers that come along down the road but as of right now that is the those are the three that are available uh, bolt action it has a 60 degree throw on the bolt so very clean, very nice uh, natural motion with that. Uh, they made it 60 degrees to make it a little bit easier to rack your rounds, um, and it definitely is noticeable. The stock has some very nice checkering on it. Not overly aggressive, just actually very comfortable. It's easy to keep a good grip on it. The stock itself is very, very glossy smooth, so that checkering definitely adds some texture there for your ease of shooting. The trigger guard and magwell are plastic. It does come with a three round detachable box magazine. Personally, I prefer five. I really wish this had a five round magazine, but for a hunting rifle, three rounds will do. And the sling that we have on here has a slot for two additional rounds so you can carry five with you easily on top of what's ever in your pockets. See if you can see this or not. Right here is the firing pin indicator. If it is out with that red ring visible, that means the rifle is cocked and has not been fired. The safety catch is right here. You can see a red mark is visible there. This has a three position safety, which I thought was interesting. I've not typically seen that on bolt action rifles. Forward is fire, one click back. You cannot squeeze the trigger on this but you can operate the bolt action. Also not something that is typical of a bolt action rifle that I've used in the past. Uh, typically, you're either on fire or you're on safe, and if you're on safe, you can't operate the bolt. With this, you can put the rifle on safe and still eject any rounds that are in the chamber safely, clear the firearm, and then you can go to full safe. Can't pull the trigger, can't operate the bolt. Um, there is a little bit of play in the bolt right here when it's on safe. If it's up just a little bit, the safety will not disengage. 
So you have to make sure the bolt is down and then you can bring it forward. To remove the bolt, there's a paddle on this side. Push in on the forward part of the paddle and your bolt comes right out very easily for cleaning. You can push the bolt straight back in with that catch staying depressed, but then you have to turn around and push it back into place. I don't know if that's a design flaw or if it's meant to actually stay open like that. I think it's a design flaw because right there it just pop right back into place. It is a little bit of a challenge to get this bolt realigned at times because it allows you to actually come in with the bolt far beyond that. So you have to manually rotate it into that sweet spot to where it will lock in place. And again, this is an honest review. I should disclaimer, I have not been paid or compensated in any way, shape or form by anybody for this video. This is just my honest review of the Stevens 334 bolt action rifle and I'm going to tell you what I really think about it. This rifle MSRPs for under $500. I paid well under that for this rifle to be able to show it off to you guys today. Got a really good deal on it, um, but I got a good deal on it not by using the channel or anybody knowing who I was. I wasn't compensated at all or given a discount to review it. Just my honest feedback. Another cool feature this has with the rubber buttstock, it's about an inch thick, but there is a plastic cap at the top up here, and this is meant to actually allow that rubber buttstock to slide more easily over your clothing without bunching them up. Typical rubber buttstock, when you go to put it into your shoulder, your clothing moves with it. This is supposed to mitigate that a little bit. The big downside that I found with that is if you have wood flooring in your home, and I do, you cannot set the rifle up against the wall on that plastic cap because it likes to slide. So you have to be very cautious of where you're putting your rifle. Um, and I don't notice that it makes a whole lot of difference bringing this up on my clothing to where it needs to be there, but it's, I guess, a nice feature. We have the Vortex Crossfire 2 optic on this. It's a two to seven by 32 power rifle scope. It's actually very affordable and very clear picture. I'm trying to line this up through the camera so that you can see. This one has a bullet drop compensating reticle in it, so you can measure out each tick. The center tick, if you center it at 100 yards, you'll be able to use the next tick down at 200, 300, and so on. But that is an image of your sight picture through that. It does have a fairly long um, eye relief on this, so I might recommend getting a cantilever mount for your rifle. With this, you can see these are medium rise mounts, and there is just very little room between the Picatinny rail, which by the way, this rifle does come with the Picatinny rail out right out of the box. But there is not a lot of room there with a medium rise mount, and I have to have that set pretty far forward for uh, comfort on my eye relief. Guys, this rifle is a great little shooter. Very comfortable. I mean, it's got a 20 inch barrel and around seven pounds, or seven, eight pounds. You cannot beat that, it is fantastic. And the price point's right too. But enough about that. Uh, today, I was shooting 149 grain M80 ball from Winchester. This was uh, just a full metal jacket round, 7.62 by 51 NATO. But I did want to talk about that. This rifle is chambered in 308 Winchester which means it can safely shoot either 308 or 760 by 51 NATO. While they are widely regarded as the same cartridge, they are different. 760 by 51 NATO and the rifles chambered in that caliber are rated for a maximum chamber pressure of 50,000 PSI. 
Rifles chambered in 308 Winchester are rated for 62,000 pounds. That being said, that 12,000 pound difference is enough to cause a catastrophic failure. If you have a rifle chambered in 760 by 51 NATO, bear in mind that if you try to shoot 308 Winchester through it, you're exceeding the maximum rated chamber pressure by 12,000 PSI. That is enough to cause a very bad day, so be very cautious of that. That's something that I didn't know at one point, and I did it. I, mean, I shot 308 Winchester through a NATO chamber, and fortunately nothing happened, but I would be remiss if I learned something and didn't pass it on to you guys. That's the whole purpose. Well, 89% of the purpose of this channel is education, and the rest is just having fun and uh, some edutainment, I guess you'd call it. But I did want to make sure that I talked about that in this video. This rifle's chambered in 308. It can safely shoot either caliber, but use caution on any rifle that is chambered in 760 by 51 NATO. It may not take 308 Winchester safely. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's episode of Idaho Rifleman and my review of the Stevens 334 308 Winchester. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you liked the video, found it informative, found it interesting, be sure to like and comment, and uh, make sure you're following the channel here. You can also check out The Idaho Rifleman on Facebook and Instagram. When I remember that I have them and I actually think about posting stuff, sometimes I post some okay content over there too. <laughs> so, again, thank you all for taking the time out of your day to watch The Idaho Rifleman. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Take care, stay safe, and God bless. We'll see you next time right here on Idaho Rifleman. Thank you all for watching the Idaho Rifleman. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you, and I wanted to take a quick second to talk to you about some of our affiliate partners. The Idaho Rifleman has affiliated with Sportsman's Warehouse, Sportsman's Guide, Delta Waterfowl, Duluth Trading Company, Carhartt, and several other retailers. If you go to idaho-rifleman.blogspot.com, click on the blog post called Affiliate Partners, there will be a hyperlinked list of all the retailers that we're affiliated with. If you happen to be shopping from one of those retailers, just follow that link. It won't cost you anything extra, but by following that link, you'll be going to that site through the Idaho Rifleman program, and we'll get a small commission off of your purchase. Again, it doesn't cost you anything extra as the purchaser, but you will be helping out the channel and helping us to bring you good, well, I think it's good. Hopefully you find it good as well. Some good content for you guys and uh, just helps financially support the channel a little bit as we keep going forward here. Again, I appreciate each and every one of you. If you would, please go to idaho-rifleman.blogspot.com and if you happen to be shopping from one of the retailers we're affiliated with, then just click that hyperlink in that post.